Hi guys, what's going on and welcome back to another episode of Total War Arena. So today we are going to be having a bit of a look at the 3.1.2 patch and we are currently loaded in into the PTS test server so we can have a look at the changes. Um, based on a lot of comments I got last time, and one thing to note is that the, yeah, so this is the test server, this is not the live server, it's the test server which is why I've got so much gold, silver and free experience. Any one of you can access it, if you just go onto the Total War Arena um, to the news section you'll see an article about the PTS test server for 3.1.2 and you can log on and test it out for yourself. Um, however, there aren't really very many people on here actually doing any testing, so I had intended the time to do this as a talky bit then going into a battle, but I can't actually get a battle, so <laughs> that hasn't really worked out for me. So we're just going to be having a look at the changes at the front end and briefly talking through some of the balance changes. So perhaps the most significant change uh, to the game is uh, limitations on commander's um, abilities based on unit level. So for example, here we've got a tier 10 versus Getwix. Now if we look at his defiance, you'll see it does 35% melee weapon, 35% melee attack, and 30% penetration damage. Which is fine, but that's because it's fully upgraded all the way to tier 10. That's quite an effective um, weapon. Now if I went and went backwards to play my premium unit, say a tier 8 with these berserkers, then in the current live game, I would get those same tier 10 um, upgrades on Defiance would still apply on my tier 8 unit, and that is what is changing. So, yeah, if we look at this tier 10 dog unit, you know, they get full access to 35%, 35%, and 30%. But if we go over to the tier 8, you're now capped at um, maximum tier 8 upgrades, which means you lose that uh, extra 5% melee weapon damage and the plus 30% melee weapon penetration damage, which is kind of significant, really. Um, so because it basically means that uh, there has been sort of quite a few players, or some players at least, who have been getting very high tier commanders and then going and playing into low tier games. When their commanders have got their abilities fully upgraded, which makes them significantly more powerful than the uh, newer players they're fighting against and gives them a real advantage. So that's what they've changed. So basically, now uh, that no longer happens. So your, your upgrades are limited um, to the tier you are playing. So if you're playing tier 5, um, you know, your defiance abilities would just be limited to here. You know, you'd get none of these upgrades at all. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, the other changes we've had, we've had a nice little uh, upgrade button which has been added into the UI. For, particularly for newer players, um, if you sort of click on Boudicca, you'll see, um, because I've got enough free experience and there is an available upgrade for Fury, it gives you a little nice little upgrade button. As you can see, I've just left one of these visibility ranges um, unupgraded, so you can see that on the UI interface. I think that's probably more for beginner players, so they know that they can upgrade their um, command disabilities, and it's kind of nice and easy to do. So perhaps one of the more controversial changes is going to be the changes to premium units and commander level. So let's just head over to say the barbarians. You can see the tech tree interface has changed very slightly. But now um, bar um, premium units can be played by any commander no matter what the level, so long as you have that commander unlocked. So for example, let's find a tier 1 commander. So say if I pick Miltiades, obviously a tier 1 commander in the current live game if I wanted to again go and play some tier 8 uh, Myrmidons then that would no longer work, that wouldn't work because Miltiades is only a tier 1 commander and Miltiades would need to be a tier 8 commander to use the tier 8 premium units however that is all changing now the premium units um, can be used by any commander so you can jump straight into a higher tier battle without having the commander experience so how does that work? Well, basically, you get access to all the abilities, so you get all these unlocked. Even though he's only tier 1, you get up to the tier 5 abilities, you know, he gets fear, um, he gets the break ranks, etc. But he doesn't get any of the upgrades that are associated with it. So while you get access to the, the fear at tier 5, you don't get access to the tier, up, tier 8 upgrades until you actually do them. So... Um, it's a bit of a strange one because, you know, if you're fighting with a tier 1 commander, you are going to get access to the three abilities, but you're going to be thrust one into a tier 8 game, which you might not be prepared for, and um, obviously your abilities aren't being upgraded. But on the other side, on the flip side, I kind of see why they've done it. I mean, I think I've played probably 700 odd battles now in the live server, and I still haven't got to a tier 8 commander yet. I mean, in part, that's because I've been spreading myself out over all the different tech trees so I can get lots of different videos and stuff. But, um, you know, I'd 
would be the sort of person who'd be looking to buy higher tier premium units and I couldn't yet do so because of the way the commander experience sort of limits that. So I'm guessing that Wargaming and uh, Creative Assembly haven't really been selling much of the higher tier premium units and they suspect that the reason is possibly the calendar limitations and that's what they're trying to sort of prevent that limitations by adding this in. Obviously the downside is there's the potential of getting a lot of people buying premium units who don't really know what they're doing and going into games that they're not prepared for, for as a result of that. And that's where I guess the most of the controversy around this is going to come up. Um, I doubt you're going to see many tier 1 commanders having oh, like tier 8 premium units. Most people aren't going to start the game and get a tier 1 commander and immediately buy a tier 8 premium unit. So it's more than likely that you're going to be you know, tier 4, tier 5, tier 6 commanders who are jumping a few tiers ahead. Um, so I think we'll just have to see how that plans out. And so long as it doesn't become too bad with you know uh, large amounts of the team being made up by these premium units with low level commanders then I don't think it's going to be a massive problem it's just going to be one of those things that we're going to have to put up with I think going forward so they're the main um, sort of key changes and the rest of the stuff largely comes down to balance changes so what are the main balance changes well since we're on multi ADs let's look at multi ADs first Electric so um, multi ADs is famous for his speed basically and his fear so his speed, his break ranks, gives a really high movement speed, and it was kind of getting ridiculously fast. Um, I kind of agree with that, to be honest. And now the base movement speed is 16, and that used to be 26% uh, percent movement speed at this rank, which obviously got upgraded as he moved up the ranks. Um, and that's now been nerfed down to 16, so that's quite a reduction. It's 10% uh, reduction in his movement speed against the break ranks, which I think is probably a good thing. Milti ADs was pretty quick. Um, so <laughs> I'm not going to complain about that one too much. They've also increased the um, cooldown of the infantry charge to make that a little bit longer. Um, again, it's only a couple of seconds once you get up to tier 10 that they've increased it by, but a small difference. And they have also um, uh, decreased the effectiveness of fear by reducing the amount of morale damage it does. It still can be upgraded to be getting reasonably high. They just removed its base from uh, 35 down to 22, as you can see here. So it's a fair reduction, but fear is, again, pretty powerful. Once you've got it fully upgraded, you can, you'd know, you only have to do one flank or something and activate fear, and you'll be getting units to route. So yeah, multi AD is a pretty hefty nerf, I think, across the board. Um, but I don't think too many people would complain about that one, possibly. I think the worst of one, in my opinion, maybe because I quite like by Vercingetrix, so maybe I'm biased, but Vercingetrix has had been nerfed with his defiance. Now, basically, they've reduced the melee attack, melee defense, uh, melee damage, sorry, melee attack, melee damage, and the armor penetration. It's just all been reduced slightly, which, I don't know. I, I know there was a lot of problems with defiance revolving um, around Vercingetrix's cavalry, where they were just charging and activate defiance and obviously be invincible for that time period and dish out quite a lot of damage. But... I just don't think that really applied quite the same to the Barbarian Infantry and the Barbarian Falksmen. I mean, in particular, the Barbarian Infantry, where, you know, they've even been commented on having been struggling a lot in recent patches, particularly with the archers and stuff like that, um, are now receiving a nerf, considering most bar Barbarian Infantry are controlled by Versus Gedrix, you know, are now receiving a nerf to their abilities. And I think they, the Infantry really need a buff, and I don't think the Falksmen are particularly overpowered. Um, I think, really, it should have been targeted at the Versus Gedrix Cavalry, why is it really not? Um, it seems to be just an across-the-board nerf, and that's having more in unintended consequences than perhaps they've considered. Um, and I think that's a negative one. I, I wasn't very pleased with that. But where I am pleased are War Dogs. Let's flick over to uh, Boudicca. So, War Dogs are getting a buff. My long-awaited War Dog buff. I used to really enjoy War Dogs, and obviously with the introduction of strikes we had in the 3.1, they kind of suffered quite a lot with those changes. And that is now all being uh, sort of ironed out and improved. So, what's changing? Uh, basically, they're getting a massive increase to their melee defense. So, if we have a look, um, yeah, melee defense. So, this is the War Dogs uh, melee defense, which used to be a lot lower. It's been increased by about 66%, which is a significant increase. Um, and that basically means they should survive melee combat a lot better because it will reduce the chance of them getting hit. Um, and it should be particularly effective against things with like lower melee attacks, so like spears and stuff like that. Um, when they're out of hoplites, uh, out of phalanx mode, should be a lot less effective against the dogs. Um, so that's a good thing. Obviously, strikes are still going to affect them, which obviously isn't so good. But the fact they get a little bit of an increase, basically, in their combat ability, their straight combat ability, I think is a good thing. And, um, yeah, pretty pleased that they're getting that little buff. I think that's going to make them a lot more playable. On top of that, it's not just that. They also get a mobility buff. 
the dog's movement speed has been boosted by 10%, basically, across the board. Um, which is great. I always felt war dogs were probably a little bit too slow anyway. Dogs should be a lot quicker than uh, people. So when, now when you deploy the war dogs, I mean, you can see here, these are obviously the tier 10s, but um, they're getting now 5.9 base movement speed. I mean, that's almost the same as some of the slower Roman cavalry. So uh, that's pretty nice. And you can have some of the incentives as well, but it gives them an increase to movement speed if you wanted to. So yeah, pretty good. Pretty pleased with that one across the board. Very pleased that war dogs have been buffed. Um, the final unit, uh, real significant unit change, is the Carthaginian Cavalry, which I don't think I was prepared enough to get sorted out. No, I wasn't. Um, but essentially, the Carthaginian Cavalry, their um, uh, Javelin Throw, uh, Numidian Throw, which used to have a 60 second cooldown in a minute, which many people felt, including me, felt was too long, because it wasn't a particularly effective Javelin Throw, um, has now been reduced to 30 seconds. Um, and oh, it's had its range increase to 60 meters as well over 50 so it makes them a little bit more usable and that's nice it's a 30 second cooldown now on a javelin throw is pretty usable considering you don't have a limited number of ammo so if you can't quite decide what you want to do in the fight um I think that's kind of a nice little buff it also gets that turn speed and deceleration as well so they stop turn throw and can get away nice and quickly so yeah kind of just makes them a little bit more usable certainly not a bad thing so that really works for me to make me want to push on to the tier 8 numidian cavalry now uh, to have a go with those javelins again. Um, other than that, that's it fairly for the main unit changes. The Romans have had a few changes um, in terms of their um, um, equipment they get, but they're pretty minor. You can read about them in the patch notes if you want to. Um, and the final thing, our stakes have been changed slightly. Their damage has been reworked. So if now if you run into stakes as an infantry player, if you're running your barbarian infantry through the forests, and there's some hidden stakes, you don't notice them, um, the amount of damage you receive has been pretty significantly reduced um, down to about a quarter of what it is in the current life game so you'll still take some damage but you know you don't wipe out your entire unit like you do now so i think that's a good thing because i've certainly ran into stakes before by mistake i don't think that affects cavalry in any way if you run into them as cavalry you're still going to take a hell of a lot of damage but now as infantry they're not quite so overpowered and i think that's a good thing um and also the hit points of stakes has been reduced by about a third so if you attack them they don't quite take quite so long to kill now as they did before so hopefully it's been a useful little summary of the main changes um, I was just kind of trying to summarise some of the things that had happened and some of the changes. Obviously it's a shame we couldn't bring you actually any battle um, play from the test server, but unfortunately we're struggling a little bit with um, getting a battle at the moment. And to top it all off, I've been having absolutely a horrible time with my computer continually blue screening. Um, and I can't quite work out if it's something to do with the selectable graphics card or the actual webcam itself. There's something, there's a driver conflict going on somewhere, which is why you can't see my face today. But hopefully we'll get that sorted over the next couple of days and either I'll disappear entirely if my computer completely breaks or we'll come back to normal. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Any questions about any of the changes, I'll be happy to do what I can to answer them. Um, I'll put a link to the patch notes in the description as well so you can go and check them out. So thanks for watching guys. Subscribe to the channel for more Total War content and I shall see you all on the next video.